Many people know about the jewel that adorns the English crown, but not everyone knows its history. The Black Prince is not called the Black Prince for nothing. It could also be called the Bloody Prince. There is still a legend that this ruby can destroy its owner, and on the contrary, bring him good luck. It all depends on how the owner will treat the jewelry. So what secrets does the Black Prince hide? Today you will learn about all its mysteries. The recorded history of the stone dates back to the 14th century, but in fact the ruby is much older. It is believed that it was mined in the 2-3 to three centuries AD and roamed through various treasuries from India to Rome. We will leave the legends and talk only about documented facts. The ruby's journey to Europe began very epic. The first known owner was the Emir of Granada, Muhammad al Amar. In the 14th century, he engaged in a war with his cousin for the throne of Granada. The situation was not in Muhammad's favor as his opponent made an alliance with King Pedro of Castile. In 1362, the Red King traveled to Seville to meet with Pedro in the hope of winning him over to his side. As an argument, Muhammad VI took with him the entire royal treasury. The jewels and gold were to impress the Castilian ruler and show Muhammad's wealth. They did indeed make a lasting impression on Pedro. When he saw all these treasures, he decided to simply get his hands on them, and he himself deprived his guest of his life and all his wealth. From that moment on, Pedro earned the nickname Cruel. He was particularly impressed by two pieces of jewelry, each with a very large ballast. Yes, even though the Black Prince is thought to be ruby, it is actually spinal or ballas. Pedro was so impressed by the jewelry that he even made a separate will in which he bequeathed the jewels to his two daughters. But after four years, Enrique de Trastamara, Pedro's half-brother, rebelled against him with the support of France. Pedro was forced to flee to Aquitaine, where he asked for help from Edward, Duke of Aquitaine, who was the son of King Edward III of England. Named the Black Prince, the ruby was named after Prince Edward, who was given this nickname by historians much later than his death. Edward agreed to help, but not for free. Pedro pledged to pay 550,000 gold florins and transfer part of Granada to Edward's possession in case of a successful outcome of the war. The Allies were able to push back Enrique's troops, but it soon became clear that Pedro could not pay his debt, and Edward actually took the debt by force with jewels from the treasury of Granada. Apparently, the Black Prince was among them. After receiving payment, Edward returned to Aquitania, and Pedro, left unsupported, was defeated in the civil war and killed by Enrique. Prince Edward's fate was also unenviable. During the Hundred Years' War, the treasury of Aquitaine was emptied, and in order to maintain power, Edward imposed high taxes on his citizens. Because of this, riots broke out throughout Aquitaine. The prince himself became seriously ill and was forced to flee to England, where he soon died. According to fragmentary information, the ruby periodically adorned the crown of English monarchs and is already quite accurately described in the Book of Jewels of Henry VIII. He commissioned the stone to be inlaid in the crown of his long-awaited son, Prince Edward VI. He came to the throne of England at the age of nine and died of tuberculosis at 16. After his death, a succession crisis began in England as Edward left no descendants. The crisis ended with the ascension to the throne of Queen Elizabeth I, the new mistress of the ill-fated ruby. The Black Prince was removed from the English crown and a hole was drilled in it through which a pin could be threaded. The ruby was used as a common piece of jewelry and is captured in one of Elizabeth's portraits. The hole was later covered with a small ruby and the stone returned to the crown. Elizabeth's fate turned out much better than the previous owners of the Black Prince, but nevertheless she never left an heir and the Tudor dynasty was interrupted on her. But that's not all. The history of the ruby is only gaining momentum. The next mention of the Black Prince pops up already at the time of Charles I. By his decree, the ruby was removed from the crown, a through hole was drilled in it, and the king wore it as an ordinary button. But the Black Prince did not forgive this treatment. During Charles' reign, revolution broke out in England, the king was executed, and Oliver Cromwell came to power. Cromwell refused the title of king, but completely usurped the power in his hands. He ordered all the king's jewelry to be dismantled for sale, and the gold melted down for coins. A 1649 parliamentary list of sales of the crown jewels includes a pierced ruby ballast wrapped in paper, sold to a private individual for only four pounds sterling. Cromwell did not last long in power. 
he died of typhoid fever and was buried with extraordinary lavishness. After his death, his son Richard came to power, but he was quickly resigned and Charles II, son of the executed king, was called to the throne. Cromwell's body was exhumed for execution. But as it turned out, the ruby did not disappear into oblivion, but was bought back by an unknown royalist who gave it to Charles after the restoration of the monarchy in England. Since then, the ruby has firmly taken a place in the English crown and takes its place there to this day. Some may say that it is a coincidence and nonsense, and someone will think that the Black Prince has its own power and can influence the fate of people depending on how his master treats him. That's such an unusual story for today. A lot of interesting things are ahead, so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned.